Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the Battle Cats Beginner's Guide. Today we're going to be looking at stories of legend more widely. Up till now I've sort of been leaving it alone, and that's because you can make some progress in it, but actually there's no kind of easily identifiable goal to head towards. Now, that's a bit different. With how your units have developed, assuming that you've been following the series up to this point, you have the capability of getting to the first legend unit of the stories of legend, a Rurum cat. And so this video is going to look at getting to that jailbreak tunnel subchapter and some general rules and ideas to bring with you in your travels through the stories of legend, as well as looking at some particularly difficult levels or levels of note. So. Let's have a look at the prerequisites, the stuff that you need first. This guide presumes that you have full superior treasure in all of the Empire of Cats stages because, frankly, you should really just be doing everything you can to get that and this is probably pitched at a difficulty above where you are currently if you haven't got all of those treasures. If you are not ready for this, there's plenty of other tutorials in the guide series. Just have a look back in the series for a unit that you might want to get or a bit you think would be more appropriate to start at and there'll be a guide waiting for you there as well. Link in the description. In Into the Future, I have all the relevant superior treasures in Into the Future Chapter 1 and Into the Future Chapter 2. So like I try to do with all of the tutorials in this series, I've been making my way through these Stories of Legend stages no gacha. Now, this is something I do to make these tutorials as open and applicable as possible to any of you, but you shouldn't by any means be limiting yourself to no gacha yourself. I've had sort of two different slots with two different philosophies going through these Stories of Legend stages. We've got the ranged version of the strategy. We've got both our basic and both our crazed meat shields here. We've got ranged units like Macho Leg, Crazed Legs, both of the Dragons, Valkyrie and Bahamut. And then when it's better to fight up close, you've got the melee sort of version of that. We've got Crazed Whale in there, Macho Leg remains because it's pretty good. Island, the Dragons remain because they're really rather good, Crazed Titan and then Bahamut again for your lots of damage. Now if you've been watching this guide for a while, you'll probably be familiar with Valkyrie and Bahamut as our chief big ticket item damage dealers. Bahamut sits at a range and does a lot of damage, a lot more damage than other no gacha units we have access to. Valkyrie Cat, very important for this one that you've beaten into the future chapter 2 moon, as would be the case if you're following the guide series. The chance to freeze enemies, which could be any enemy except for metal ones, is insanely useful here if you don't have specific units for different types of enemies, especially for normal type enemies. A lot of your basic rare gacha will be against red and things like that, but it's not often you find a unit that's tailored against any type of enemy. If you have Dr. Cat, which is a rare gacha unit, put your island up in the top row with your crazed whale and also Dr. Cat in that top row. I say Dr. Cat, that's the true form. Before that, it's Fisherman Cat. Those three at the top gives you a defense combo, which is going to make your units tankier and give you a generally easier time. For the vast majority of these stages, if your unit outranges the enemies of the stage, or at least the principal boss enemy, it's going to do a good job. It's only sort of in wave stages where that ceases to be the case. To find out what the ranges are, check the Battle Cats wiki. I'll link that as well for the range of your unit, which is in a data table at the bottom of the page about the unit, and then for the range of the enemy, which is in a data table at the bottom of its page. Your unit's number's bigger than the enemy unit, you're probably good to use your unit. For the Reds, I've found that Craze Whale and Island, your no gacha units, can withstand boars and stuff like that that you will come across in these stages, as long as you have all your meat shields out, some dragons in the back line as well. Actually, you don't necessarily need slowing, freezing, knocking back abilities against these boars to defeat them. Now, these two do have abilities. It's strong against, that increases their damage against red, but nothing particularly special. But, you know, if you have all your meat shields, a backline, and those two red enemies shouldn't overrun you. 
Obviously, though, if you have a pretty good anti-red unit that fulfills the range requirement, or perhaps ICAT works a little bit differently, that just depends on whether you can get it in to get a freezing attack done quickly enough, or whether it will get caught out, swap out your island for that, because island tends to be the more expensive, more cash-draining one, and put your unit in there. Crazed Titan is actually really useful for walking up to enemies and getting damage on them when with anything else you couldn't. That is because, as we've seen before in some of these tutorials, Crazed Titan only has one knockback, and that's when it dies. It will soak up damage to that point, which allows it to walk up to stuff and hit it without being knocked back at certain percentages of its health. If you don't have Crazed Titan, the true form of normal Titan Cat, Jamira doesn't do quite as good a job and doesn't have the chance of doing a wave attack, but it does that job pretty decently. The Crazed Whale and the Island sort of act a tiny bit like Crazed Titan, but they do have knockbacks. They're not going to soak up as much damage before they get knocked back, but often they're decently tanky enough to get damage off. And these three, Macho Leg and the two dragons, well, they're ranged. Often, with meat shields in front and a chunky enemy that you're trying to chip down, you can build up huge stacks of dragons and legs that get damage done really well onto those enemies in a safe and kind of cost-effective way that isn't too much of a tragedy if they die off because you can begin your stack again. The point about stacking the dragons and legs brings me on to battle techniques. In some of these stages, you'll find the main enemy of the level comes out pretty quickly, and you may be tempted to put on a rich cap to get yourself the monies you'll want. But actually, a lot of the time, if you bring out all of your meat shields, macho leg and a dragon every now and then you can stall the start of the stage while you build up your worker cat and then push forward eventually at the start generally if nothing's coming out quickly you should be stalling whatever peons are coming out but other than that doing nothing to push forward you want to get your worker cat up to max there's never an environment in which it's bad to have a max level worker cat just sometimes you can't manage to get there now obviously the Stories of Legend starts easy and so the suggestions for levels that I'm going to give start within the Parthenon and end at Alcatraz. And we'll look at Jailbreak Tunnel and the final stage in that to get the Aruran Cat separately. The first level I want to look at is a wacky one with different mechanics and that is Labyrinth of Hades. This stage combines a wave attacking unit, Cory with a black bun bun, a unit that you really need a lot of meat shielding to keep stalled and in the same place. So what do you do? The answer is to just meat shield normally for the bun bun black. That is what is going to cause you the most trouble. At the start of this stage, you should do the stalling that we mentioned, stacking units and then a couple of meat shields each time, upgrade your worker cat, and if it looks like you're making too much progress, stop spamming stuff and let the dark doges which come along every now and then like that knock you back to the start of the base and just move forward again so the reason that we're just meat shielding normally here and i've brought three meat shields for this one of which is a razor which i think you, you definitely benefit from is because we need to protect ourselves from the bum bum black it's too strong to not be meat shielding for but additionally, the Bum Bum Black is so strong that it will just keep killing the meat shielding. And that means that sometimes it will kill the meat shields when Corey's locked on to what it thinks is a meat shield being there and is about to take its shot. It takes its shot anyway, but hits nothing because the meat shield is already dead. And if it is already dead, no wave comes out. Additionally, the waves aren't so strong that you'll just be completely destroyed by them when they come. You can largely keep yourself going and even maintain a Bahamut long enough to get the hits in on Corey. Valkyrie is very useful here. If she gets a decent proc program random occurrence rate on this level, she will be able to hit both of these units and actually freeze them at the same time, rendering the Cory unable to wave and the Bun Bun unable to hit. My Valkyrie placement was not very good. I'd advise waiting a bit longer than I did and keeping it behind your stuff, otherwise it's going to die just like it did there. But this is the main part of the battle where we succeed or don't, whether Bahama is going to get the hits in to kill Cory or not. Don't lure them to your base. I experimented with this and you can try and often in the Stories of Legend fight stuff separately by luring the faster stuff to your base and then the slower stuff giving yourself time to deal with that later. 
there's actually not much speed difference between these two, and so you don't really benefit so much from doing that. Valkyrie's about to come off recharge time, so we'll definitely get her again. Heat meat shielding as we were going to, and you just gotta hope that Corey allows us to get the hit in. And it did, just as Bahamut dies. Perfect timing, actually. And I don't know if you saw within there, but Corey did try to take a hit on a meat shield that had died and didn't manage to wave. How do you encourage that to happen? Well, the best thing to do is to bring a majority of cheap, weak meat shields, like the 75 monies ones. I've got one razor in there because we need some form of strength of meat shielding. Otherwise, the bun bun will just completely destroy us. But it's all about looking at your priority here as to which is the stronger enemy unit, which one you need to defend against. And you can only really find that out by trying out the level and seeing how your units deal with things. Obviously, anything anti-wave, anti-black, anti-normal type enemy is going to really help you here. Beached mammals immediately seems like quite a scary one. There are several chunky bun buns doing damage to you. So it is important to bring ideally two razor types, so a razor and crazed tank, and then the two 75 monies ones, macho cat or mohawk if you have its true form, and crazed cat. Then you want your stacking as suggested, both dragons and macho leg. Then true Valkyrie is of true help here. She does a lot of freezing, which is really needed if you don't have any anti-red, black or floating units. Also in there is the boar, and as we mentioned, having Kray's whale and it's strong against red can really help you. And then Bahama as a ranged damage dealer. It really does do quite a good job here. But then again, if you have some unit with enough range and you've checked it has abilities against black or red floating or combination even better, you're obviously better to use that one. But Bahama is dependable and no gacha, so everyone can make use of it. If you don't have true form Valkyrie, you're probably better off looking within your units for something with enough range and hopefully abilities against these to defeat them. But I think the most important thing is maintaining all of your meat shields. And as you stored at the start to get your max worker cat, bringing your CPU might not be a bad idea. Then the cat CPU can play the level for you, get the meat shields out in the most efficient way possible, and you can go off, make yourself a lovely cup of tea while the bun buns fight the dust. Now, Star Ocean is a particularly difficult level. This one can very often result in you getting overrun. There are a huge amount of Dark Doges in the level, and actually it's very difficult to deal with them. There is one way to make that easier, and for when I was going through it, one thing that actually made the level possible. This little thing here, I haven't introduced it to this feature, it's a relatively new one, but when you've beaten a stage before, you go back into the same menu and click Equip, well, it tells you what you used before and asks you if you want to use that. So what I used here was all of the good meat shields that I could muster. Once you got four, you usually don't actually want to go over four. Then macho leg, crazed legs cap, because that was really my only proper cheap area of effect. If you happen to have done crazed bird and have crazed UFO, definitely use that. But I've been advised to suggest don't use your normal UFO cap. It won't have the range that you want. The dual dragons, even though they're actually only single target, do a lot of damage to the main boss, which once you got rid of that, the Dark Doges aren't so much of a problem. Then, of course, we know Valkyrie and Bahamut do a lot of area of effect. That said, if you have done Into the Future Chapter 3 already and you have Bomber Cap, definitely use that. If you have something with a huge area of effect, definitely use that. But we're going to look at a strategic way to make the huge run of Dark Doges easier to deal with. That is going from your base and pushing through instead of trying to maintain yourself at their base and kill what's there. The first thing you want to do is push forward as quickly as possible. Obviously, with the Rich Cat, you're going to be able to do that a little bit more quickly, and additionally, you're going to be better equipped for the rest of the battle. Although not so much, because you build up your monies quite quickly in this level. So you only really want a few units, a little band of cats, to get to the front of the base here, just to activate the boss. And then once that is done, you still do nothing, even though it may seem weird. You're actually wanting to start this battle properly at your base. So you should be upgrading your worker cap more attentively than I've been doing here. As you can see, you get your monies quite quickly. But then you start at your base with these units. 
and then perhaps get yourself Valkyrie out, and as soon as you can, after that, the Harmer. As you can see at the moment, there are a kind of manageable amount of Dark Doges, and you're sort of able to kill them off a little bit more quickly at your base, that is common benefit of luring what we're doing here the Dark Doges have to travel further to get to you, so you have more time with HNR alone at any given time, meaning you are more likely to kill it, at which point the Dark Doges don't become so much of a problem because it's only them you have to deal with. With Bahamut, your dragon stacking and all of your meat shields as well as legs, any area of effect you have, any other anti-normal type units that you may have, you can dispense with the HNR reasonably quickly, and so the Dark Doges that are left aren't too much of a problem at all. There is a level very similar to this one in Alcatraz called Prison Prairie, and actually that one you kind of want to fight at their base because it's a different kind of level, one I'd call a hold out level. In that stage, there are lots of HNRs, but only a limited number of black enemies. With Prison Prairie, you're actually waiting for the black enemies to stop spawning, killing all of them so that you're just left with a clump of HNRs that are easier to defeat. That one is a battle of attrition, and that's best fought as close to their base as possible to give yourself as much space between their base and yours as you can so that they don't push you back all the way to yours. This one I describe as a push through level. The Dark Doges will keep coming and actually will keep getting more difficult. You need to push through them and get to the base before there are too many of them to be able to beat the level. The Battle of Attrition slash Holdout level is best fought as close to their base as possible. The pushing through where the enemies aren't going to stop is best fought starting from your base, given the advantages of luring. Underground base may seem like one of those stages where it's really important to bring a rich cap, but actually that isn't really what's going to win the level for you. In this one, three very powerful Lebuans come out, and this is one of those stages where you're going to want to stall with your legs, your dragons, and save up for stuff that can go and land hits on them, the Crazed Titan and Jamira. So you can get your workout up a little bit, and once the Lebuans are near, you're going to start meat shielding with, say, all three of these meat shields. You don't need too many particularly expensive ones, maybe just a razor is a more expensive one, because the Lebuans are so powerful, they're going to kill everything in one shot anyway. And then bring out both of your Titans. They will have that opportunity to get in and land the hits that nothing else can. By the time you've landed a few hits on these Lebuans, they're going to be gone. The difficulty of this level comes from not being able to hit them at all and feeling like you're trapped and unable to move forward. Use your cat cannon if you can to clear the peons and once again these titans can get their shots in and that is what is going to win you the stage. As you can see we chip them down far enough there to start being able to kill them whenever we got any more hits on them. But I was just bringing some bare bones stuff to demonstrate that the titans are really your chance of winning. Bear in mind that, of course, having other units around isn't going to hurt with these extra eyebrows and stuff that come along. Having some ranged anti-floating, anti-normal type enemy stuff is always pretty great. Crazed Legs can also be a unit that really helps it. Whereas the Titans are walking in and whacking the loved ones without too much worry because they only have that one knockback, Crazed Legs can stay away from being killed for at least a decent while, but its waves will have a chance to do chip damage to the Lebuans. Every little helps with this level. It's all about chipping them away with little bits of damage where you can while maintaining your stalling of those Lebuans to a point where they're easy to just poof so that they're not quite so imposing anymore. Villain's Jungle marks the introduction of an enemy that's been causing me and multiple other people trouble throughout the game, R. Ost. A very fast attacking, high damaging unit. The best ways to deal with R. Ost, if you can manage it, which you can in this level, are as many meat shields as possible and long range attackers. Our exception to that is going to be using Crazed Titan again to get hits in that other units can't. That said, if you have any anti-normal type unit, use that. If you have Hacker Cat or Cyberpunk, definitely use that. The closest equivalent I've got here is Crazed Legs, which can send waves past the many douches that also appear in the level 
to the Arost so that we are more constantly damaging it. Although it's got a really difficult enemy in it, it's actually a kind of fairly straightforward level format. We are able to get our worker cat up to max at the start, and that means it's fine to put a CPU on because there's no special combo units in here, at least for me. So we can just let the CPU spam whatever we've got to the best of its ability, which it should be able to do because you got the constant monies from the douches. Turn your CPU off at the start, as is the case of all of these CPU levels. We need to get working at max first, otherwise the CPU will concern itself with upgrading the worker cat. These are actually quite strong enemy units, especially the otter, so just be careful that you've got all your meat shields out. And if you're showing too many signs of pushing forward, just let the stuff hit you and start moving back again. Upon the death of something like the douche, remember to just upgrade your worker cat. And as you can see, by the time we killed the otter, another douche has come along. So our progress won't go too far, but, you know, just monitor it. If you're getting too far, let them push you back again. Once you've got your worker cat up to max, you're going to want to now spam everything you've got except the harmer. The reason that you're just doing these units yourself here is because if you entrusted the battle to the CPU now, it would put out your expensive big ticket items immediately and they wouldn't be in a very protected position. So once the Oros comes out of the base upon hitting it, put your CPU on. It might be a bit sluggish at the start, putting out the Bahamut, but when it's got the monies for stuff, it will put out stuff as soon as the recharge time is over. And we're talking milliseconds as soon, not our reaction time as soon. That's why the CPU will definitely benefit you in this kind of level. It's crucial to have a huge stack of dragons and legs, otherwise you simply won't get enough damage off on our rocks. You can see how powerful it is, and you need all four of those meat shields as well, and you'd really be in a very difficult position without the good meat shields like the Crazed and Eraser, because it's just gonna push through your meat shields too quickly, and your dragon and leg stack will die if your meat shielding isn't strong enough. Eventually, the CPU should be able to overrun the Arost. If it's not working for you, think about adding maybe more meat shielding and make sure that you have got dragons and legs. Macho leg would need to be in its true form in order to get a good stack going. Then check your filters. Anything that outranges the Arost that doesn't provide so much of a drain on your monies that you might lose would probably be good. Cat Trial is another of those push through levels. There is a constant stream of one horns and that doesn't end. If you can't make your way through them, it doesn't matter if the camel at the back end of the level is dead or not, you're still going to lose. So as a baseline, I'd recommend definitely bringing your crazed whale and your island cat. Definitely hack a cat or cyberpunk if you have that. Some meat shields, definitely the legs and dragons again to stack up against the one horns. It's about getting the firepower to kill them and not worrying about what conserves monies too well because you're going to be getting plenty when you kill them off. This one is also probably a level that would benefit from using the CPU because you can get your worker cat up to max at the start or if you were impatient like I was in my attempt, get it up to max after killing a couple of the one horns. Then you can set the CPU on its way. The advantage of Hacker Cat or Cyberpunk is that it might be able to hit the Camel and do chip damage off to that. If you don't have it, like I didn't, your best bet is probably Craze Titan again. Craze Titan has that 10% chance of unleashing a massive shockwave, which will run all the way to and do damage to Camel. Although it doesn't happen too often, if you don't have any other super long range unit like Cyberpunk, Craze Titan is going to be your best bet for chipping away the Camel. But your main concern with Cat Trial, having enough firepower to kill the One Horns faster than they build up. Jailer in the Morgue contains Dober, an enemy that we're going to treat a little bit like we treated Cory. Now, the big difference is that Cory is guaranteed to do wave attacks and Dober isn't, which injects a sense of RNG and trial and error into this, which we'll get to. But both have an emphasis on other enemies in the stage, and so are ones that we kind of need to meet shield with anyway, and just hope for the best when we're fighting against the waves. So we're going to use a fast and cheap and weak meat shield like this to, as is the hope with these kind of levels, make Dober miss its attack and therefore definitely not wave. And then we've got a nice strong eraser to join it. And then the rest of the units are fairly standard. If you happen to have anything wave blocking or even better wave shielding, 
you've got a good thing going for you there. But the essence of this strategy is to use these units and a CPU to try and make Bahama get enough shots off on this Dover to kill it before it reaches too near to our base and kills us. Because Bahama won't always hit its shots and the waves from the Dover are down to chance, this level is one that will go better in some runs and worse in others. So for that reason, I suggest bringing yourself a speed up as well because you might be in for the long haul as far as force closing and trying again is concerned. So, at the start of the level, you want to turn your CPU off and probably your speed up as well, because you've got otters rapidly approaching you. And at this point, you just want to build up the kind of stack that you normally would. Your meat shields, your legs, and then possibly a dragon when you can afford that, and just continue to meat shield. Then, upgrade your worker cat when you possibly can, and the otters should die off. If they don't, and your legs start dying, put out more to replace them. On the death of the final of those initial otters, just don't spawn anything more for now. Another one will come along and it will push you back to your base. And it's probably good to let it do that because you want to get your worker cat up to max and you don't want to be pushing further forward than you wanted to by accident. Put out the stack again, stabilize ourselves, and then push forward with the less big ticket items. You know, the reproducible ones, the not too expensive ones, just not Valkyrie and Bahamut and such things like that. You want to build up quite a presence of stuff before you let the CPU loose. But when you're sort of relatively near the base, build up a decent kind of nest egg of money. Initially, there'll be a bunch of these cellar boodles. Probably get your Bahama out so the CPU doesn't squirm about saving for it. It'll probably still need to save for something like Valkyrie. But now it is up to the CPU to try and beat the level. A moment of truth is seeing if Valkyrie can get a freeze off, but the big moment of truth is seeing whether Bahama can get a shot off or not. As you may have noticed there, Bahama missed. You may not get a single hit off on Dover, which is why it's probably important to have your CPU and your speed up so you don't lose your sanity. Let's let this one play out, see how far we get. If we get put in danger, we'll force close and try again, but while we leave it like this, there's no harm in seeing what the CPU can do. You can see with our reliance on Valkyrie freezing and Bahamut getting lucky shots off that you'd benefit hugely from having an anti-normal type unit. But actually, even there, just with one shot got off by Bahamut, and just letting the CPU spam at everything else and the Valkyrie getting relatively decent luck with a couple of freezes, we managed to get through the level. The important thing is to just be alert enough to force close, stop, try again when the Dover gets close to your base. But otherwise, you're just letting the CPU try and carry through the level for you, and quite often it will. Once you've got all these units here, and especially if you have ones that work better that you place in, the CPU should be able to get this level done for you without too much bother. That will do it for this beginner guide on getting through the Stories of Legend stages towards Jailbreak Tunnel. If there's any of these levels that you're still struggling on, or any ones in between that you want to ask about, don't hesitate to ask. In the meantime, in this tutorial, be making progress through Into the Future Chapter 3, if you're following the guide in the order that we do things here. And if you're looking to be able to do something else or you've come to this and realise the, the cats and such are a bit high level for you, or if you haven't got one of these units that you think would be very useful, Praise Titan might be an example, check the series in each case and there'll be something there for you. So I hope this has been of help to you. I will bid you goodbye and I hope you enjoyed.